a physicalist postulate, you're making a non-physicalist postulate. But there's no way that you can back yours up through pure empiricism. It's just that you have to postulate it. And I accept that you might postulate it, but it's not any better empirical standing than... It's, it's just a faith-based... It's a belief-based argument, right? Wrong. We, ex we Wrong. accept that. Wrong. But, no. so, but so how, through what... Through it's, a, what it's an inductive... Logical, it's an in well, okay, explain it's a, your induction. Explain no, 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 how the soul is expressing What, what, what I mean by induction is, mechanism. it means observing... Uh, phenomena which until now have been not mainstream because mm -hmm. of the taboo sure. associated with these right people don't want to talk about these things sure. because they're afraid yeah, of being stigmatized question. as uh, possessed in the olden days or sure. now as being mentally sure. ill or yeah. you get referred to as psychiatrist so people don't want to talk about it but that is changing now thank goodness in the last 10 years 15 years Absolutely. and now amazingly mainstream academic research particularly the United States but also places like Holland and elsewhere are now actually doing uh, research on this and what they are just Discovering is absolutely incredible, astonishing. They're coming, they're actually uh, narrating uh, accounts which should be physically impossible by any, not, uh, any understanding that we have today. So, as I've already mentioned to you before, where you have people who are born blind and deaf, have a near death experience, and whilst they're dead uh, and blind and deaf, having out of body experience, they're looking down upon themselves, they're observing uh, what, is being, what is happening accurately what they're hearing and when they're resuscitated and okay. they recover hang on sure, sure. they're able to uh, tell their healthcare professionals oh you said this and this and you did this I noticed when I was observing what was going on this is someone who's dead and blind by the way yeah. all right I noticed that you were doing this procedure and you were doing that procedure and the healthcare professional the doctors and the nurse and so on except this is exactly what actually happened and this is evidence inductively mm -hmm. so I'm not starting from a theory I'm mm -hmm. saying from well this is very peculiar yeah, how do explain you explain it. this yeah, so what the research and I mentioned to you also some academic research at the University of Minnesota you can access it online I've read sure. I've read the research and and they look at people who have been born blind and deaf who had ND experiences and, and had these extraordinary uh, experiences uh, and th they uh, corroborated them were there any witnesses any independent third party yes there were yes they are as they said they were and also went through possible physical explanations you mentioned some of them like yeah. these uh, biochemical reactions mm -hmm. in the brain so they have found that all of those not really uh, at all uh, of any of any exp any explanatory value sure. they do not actually explain sure. the phenomena that you and others have claimed for okay. it so this is a mainstream academic uh, discipline now mm -hmm. and what they're uncovering is extraordinary for me it suggests an understanding of the universe and ourselves which is no longer just materialist it's much more okay. holistic okay, so it includes what I would call and I'm not fussy about words what you can call it a soul or a spirit or whatever sure. consciousness but consciousness it seems is not just a byproduct of the brain it has its own independent reality which exists beyond the brain's demise and okay. has a life of its own and this points to a spiritual dimension I deduce inductively that religious people would call the spirit or God so it's all interconnected in a rich holistic I, I, understanding I understand that I find compelling convincing based on empirical observations okay. y your insistence it must just be can I, can this I that, just... and the other is are not okay. persuasive so we're, we're, not persuasive so I've got two questions number one how on earth does yes. a person who's been deaf and blind their entire life have an out-of-body experience and know what they're seeing? How do they know that they're seeing themselves being operated on? How do they know what colours are, what people look like, if they've never experienced these things in their life? Unless they're being given divine knowledge, which, again, is it's, a, it's an unjustifiable postulate. That's just, oh, because they do this, they okay. must have it's had a very God, simple answer. And therefore, you just have to... Very simple God. answer. I, I've seen YouTube videos where you have, uh, like, a boy of 10 or 12 who's d born deaf suddenly be given a cochlear implant like my sister had this she had mm -hmm. meningitis yeah. anyway she's given her an ability to suddenly hear again for the first time in her life and you can actually see the guy suddenly he can hear the world around him I hang don't, on I don't and, deny and, that he and he knows that he can hear it he's all Whoa. He and what you can see the, the big are. and no but he because he doesn't be, know that because what he hears as a bird is a bird singing i don't know that no, but he does see as a no, but he does no, no 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 of course you don't he, he understand, understands he understands he is hearing what it is just by virtue of having that ability sorry he understands because we are meant to hear we have ears sure that that what was not working is now working so it's native to us in a properly functioning brain to actually be able to hear so when he suddenly hears again it's not like this alien thing that is 
apart from him. It is an awakening into a world which is he is a part of. So he's come home to the way he should be so living. With this person. And, and so similarly with you, I can't speak to what it's like to be born blind and have that vision because I have no idea. But, but they feel that they are actually seeing real things and they are independently corroborated by healthcare experts that they really must have seen it because it's exactly what happened. And that is physically impossible by your understanding of reality. So with someone who is suddenly able to hear, understand a language that they know how to speak, they know how to write, but they can't write, I wouldn't know if I have been deaf, I, I, I wouldn't know what words mean. I wouldn't know what they sound like. I know how to speak Good, them, good question. I know how to write them and read but them. But these people but are unquestionably hearing though. No one did. No one did no, 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 that I a agree, cochlear agree, implant but, will make yes, a person so hear. My point, my point being so it's real just, hearing yes, and analogous to, to things. Yeah. My point being yeah. that if someone has been born blind and deaf and then they've had this near-death experience where they've seen and heard, so as you claim. No idea what's going on, just the usual just biggest corner. rhetoric bullshit. If, if, yep. as, <laughs> if, as you claim, they're hearing and seeing as they never have before, yes. then under what possible mechanism can they understand and make sense of what they're seeing? But they, they do. Can't, no, but you're okay. saying they do. You're yes. saying that they understand, they oh, this is me on a, on a surgi surgical table and I've got doctors around me. If I've never seen those things, I don't know what they are. No, okay. If I've but, never but, seen but, them, I understand I your point. But the point is this, I, I can't speak to your answer in that I've never been in that situation but yes. I, I, I can say from the, the reports on this that the literature on this is vast now and academically period if you look at the literature people do actually objectively view things and we know that not just because they say so because it's independently fact-checked by people hang on let me finish so we know that the experiences they have are authentic because you couldn't just imagine any old random stuff and get it right like that. It would have to be real. So I'm not bothered about how the veracity of it is checked out. You know, how do they really understand a doctor is a doctor? But the fact is, but if, it, they, it seems if, if they see if they see a guy in a white coat uh, under, uh, um, doing the surgery and they actually observe that accurately and report, well, he did this and this and this. Whether or not he really understands what a medical doctor professionally how is, can he, how can he report is it not if he the point. Know what it is. But he does. We but how can he? What? If he doesn't know what it is, then how can he? he no, I haven't read okay, the literature so to which you're directly This would be referring. John Locke then about sense perception. Can, can people have sense perception of medical procedures and accurately report a man doing this and the colours and the noises and the sounds? Can they report that accurately whilst not perhaps understanding the full depth of what's, what's not happening? Not understanding any depth uh, of it. Well, no, the, not no they, they must is. have some understanding because they report a human being doing so and so. They have some understanding. This is what they report. Now, you may not understand how they can do that, but do they report it? Yes. Are what they report, is what they report accurate? Yes. Over and over again, in peer-reviewed, uh, situations that are fact-checked by independent witnesses. They, this is all fact. You can't, in the, in the face of that, dogmatically insist that none of this is real. I think that's unscientific I agree. I and agree. against reality. So that is not the point that I'm making. The point that I'm making is that your justification for it is equal to mine in that there's no way that we can prove it. It's purely an we axiomatic can. We can fact-check it. It's, no, but it's purely an axiomatic difference the way that we explain the causal mechanism. How do you explain, explain a blind, how do you explain a blind, a blind, deaf, a, a blind dead person how does the who has an out of experience actually accurately observing what's going on at a car crash scene or in a surgery and giving in-depth narrations that all of this happened because they, they say How they saw the it. How justify it any better than DMT? How do you explain that? The DMT doesn't, DMT course, doesn't explain they, they this. Explain it in exactly no, the it same doesn't. Way. No, this course, is, it postulates but you said you hadn't read the literature. It doesn't explain the causal mechanism. It's interesting. You said you hadn't read the literature. I read the literature. But you see, this explanation is discounted in the literature. Yes, but my point is that you ought to discount So what is your explanation? You ought to discount the soul as a justification for Why? it as well. Because there's no explanation of a causal mechanism by which you are able to perceive this out of body do, experience. Do I need a causal explanation? Of course. If you're Why? making a postulate that the soul exists, then you have to explain explain why the soul's existence justifies okay, 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 I, I mean, normally I hate analogies, but I'll give you an analogy. Okay. Uh, you've done physics, haven't you? I'm doing physics. I've not done... Oh, you are doing physics? Doing okay. Physics. I will confess, I've never studied physics in my life. When I get in an aeroplane uh, in a couple of weeks' time, which inshallah I'll be doing, I trust that when I get on that British Airways aircraft that's going somewhere, mm -hmm. I trust that the physics and the geometry and the engineering is all going to work. I have unless no. Unless it's Boeing. I have it unless it's Boeing. Yes. Well, we'll go there. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, good point. Yeah. Um, assuming it's none of that. Um, I have no idea about the laws of physics, but I actually have a really confident trust that this aeroplane is actually going to. Mm -hmm. 
you know, obey the laws of physics yeah. and get me from A to B. Yeah. Does that make my confidence in that in that uh, belief invalid? No, because it's falsifiable. It's derived no, no, from no. a falsifiable process. But is it? Is it? Is it but no, no, my question is: Is it valid? No, it's not valid to. Oh, it's to, not valid. Disbelief. My, my, no, yes. no, my confidence in this aircraft. Being oh no, able your to, confidence is justified. Right, but, yes. uh, but okay. But by the way, I've already confessed. I have no idea about the physics yes. of that aeroplane actually flying. So this is an analogy, of course. Absolutely. So coming back to the original, do you see my point? Not even though I can't explain the how the, 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 the co hang on the cause of the solar, but the, I can't explain the mechanism. I, I'm could, excited to be there. No, to be could, honest, you but, but you could you could science. see the outcome of the effects of it regularly and independently fact checked by healthcare professionals who say yes, this person who was dead and blind did actually, according to their again, testimony, again, did reliable see. I don't doubt the. For the fact that I don't system, know. I, any more than I understand the physics that would take me in a BA airplane to my destination. Sure, sure. It's not, the, an, it's not there's a, there's an argument against it. But there's a distinction to be made. Do you see why, why it's not yes, an argument yes, against God? Absolutely, why? but there's, a Good. Uh, there's no argument. I'm not making an argument against God. I'm saying that your argument we're not for talking about, God We're not talking about God here. Or soul, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Whoa. I'm not making an argument against the soul. I'm making an argument that your argument for the soul doesn't justify your postulates. Your argument through this obs yeah. observation of this phenomenon... But I'm so, I still don't know what your argument is. Your, your argument... Doesn't seem There's to a be... distinction to be made between the airline analogy and ah, the soul analogy. Good. What's the difference? With the, the question of the science, yeah. you can study and you can understand why an airplane flies. Yes. You can go exactly yeah. through every single mechanism yeah. of the airplane and it will causally explain mm -hmm. why when you sit in that airplane it will take you in the sky and you'll end up in your other destination. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It produces lift through the turbines and exactly. the engines well, there you and go. it has Thank flaps. No, and now I understand oh, why I, it is I, I can I fly. Don't even Thanks the to you. Of it, but there's, <laughs> right. it can be explained. Yeah through purely physicalist, purely empirical, falsifiable right. science, which right. has been done. We've made testable predictions and yep. we adjust And, and airplanes, airplanes do fly. And they do fly. Yeah. We know Usually. this. Usually. Yeah. Usually. We know this yeah. because we have falsifiable Absolutely. evidence and methodology through which we so can determine ha, 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 the best How does that relate to my, my original point? When you say, oh, I don't know how the soul works, yeah. you can't know how the soul works. Oh, why? Because it's entirely separate from this... Can't. So the can't, the can't, can't explain can't, the cause so, Suddenly, this word "can't" has appeared, and I don't. Where, 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 where does that come well, from? Until you explain the causal mechanism. No, 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 uh, no, no, no. Or explain uh, how I might derive no, no. the knowledge. Of Are that you causal saying, mechanism? in principle, it's impossible? Yes. Ah, I'm saying it's es okay. epistemically well, impossible. Why is it impossible? Where do you get that knowledge from? It's impossible epistemically. Because there's no testable prediction that you can make to justify it. Okay. Well, I've already given you uh, a repeatable test. No, 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 hang on. No, no, no you no, haven't. No. You've expressed that this phenomenon exists. You've said many, many times, right? We can look back at the camera footage. You probably said four or five times that this phenomenon exists and you say you know it's it's impossible for it to happen and then you say it is. so it must be the soul so, so, so yes, they yes, say it is, it so is, they say is. but then you say so it must be the soul but you're, you're making that leap without really justifying where that leap is coming from you can't explain the causal me mechanism that explains the soul's uh, justification okay the, the, how the, the soul okay. can experience I, 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 I don't have to give a detailed uh, of course you do. No, excuse me I don't any more than I do about the aeroplane flying before I get on an aeroplane and trust it to actually take me to my destination because it works in reality it actually happens but there like, is no, someone who can give that uh, explanation uh, uh, yes they can but the fact that science at the moment, which is just beginning, or, or uh, academics are beginning to look at these uh, phenomena seriously, like NDEs mm -hmm. and, and people uh, uh, approaching yep. death who have no brain yep. matter left because of cancer, nevertheless ha have exactly, uh, and you suddenly become fully conscious and aware and start talking again to say goodbye to their loved ones. Um, the fact that I don't understand that analogous to the aeroplane thing doesn't bother me overly because we're in the infancy of our, hang on, hang on, the infancy. And therefore, just because we're in the infancy of understanding is not an argument against the reality of the thing when we're in the infancy of understanding. I agree. Therefore, your dogmatic rejection is premature, to put it politely. Okay, so I will agree that it's a premature rejection. If I entirely reject the existence of the soul based on the fact that we can't explain it, you're exactly. Right. Absolutely, that would be That's my argument. But you agree, then? I don't think I've made that point that the soul doesn't exist. My point is that it's not a sufficient explanation. As you say, we're in the infancy yet, of science. Yes, uh, You know, humans 150,000 years ago saw that birds fly. They might not know how, right? They see flapping wings, but they don't understand the physical mechanism through which that yeah, works. exactly. But, you know, they said it was magic, right? You know, the, the sun 
rises in the morning, it's a, it's a, it's Apollo riding his chariot through the sky. Whatever possible explanation. No, but, that, that was always poetry but, in Homer. But it was, yeah. but it was postulated, right? There's postulates. As science develops, we discover in almost all cases where we thought it was magic before, we thought it was something metaphysical. We've almost always proven that there was some physical explanation behind it. And my point is not that the soul doesn't exist. My point is that you're using the soul to justify some phenomenon is entirely unjustified, given that the science is in its infancy. No, given uh, that we don't know enough about it to say that it's a soul and therefore, I mean, this originally stemmed from our conversation about free will and about God, which was God well, that was like ages ago, ago right yeah, was that, yeah. But it originally stemmed from that. To say that there's a soul because we don't understand something and therefore God, which I'm not sure if you're still using this as a way to justify God, but I presume that the soul and God are probably somewhat interlinked. It's not justified to make that further postulate because we don't understand. Okay, right. right. Th th this is taking us back to deeper issues here to do with the nature of Western science. I suppose I, I, so. I, 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 and, and my my disagreements with some aspects of the way Western science has been done over I the last several hundred years, uh, and that my reading of it ever since the Renaissance in the West, science predates that. In the, in the Muslim world, science was very advanced uh, in, in medicine and surgery and, and, and uh, physics and other areas. But in the West, it took a decidedly materialist turn under people like Bacon and others, and it became militantly anti uh, anti God, anti metaphysical, exactly. And I think that's a misunderstanding. But, but, can I explain why? Well, I think can you, you let me finish? Because sure, you had sure, a. Sure, uh, I'm, I'm giving you my response. Of course, yeah, of course. Pardon me. So I, I think that that is the case, clearly. I, I can, uh, uh, we can see, look at the works of people like uh, Thomas Hobbes, for example, mm -hmm. one of the. Uh, and his resolute insistence, uh, Descartes and others, on looking for materialist explanations. Now, materialist explanations kind of work in some areas, but in terms of an explanation for whole of reality, Reality, there's a philosophical assumption yes. packed into this yes. which is not intrinsic to the scientific method I, I uh, absolutely but a lot of modern science in the West works on that assumption uh, and this is unfortunate now there's a great okay. work which I've mentioned to you before by uh, professor Chicago University yes. called the structure of revolutions yes. on the paradigm shift and I mention that because it's an absolutely key work in this whole area of philosophy of science, of course. And I reference that because I think now we're ripe for a post-materialist paradigm. What I mean is, yeah, the universe can be investigated physically, but there are some phenomena increasingly important to our observations of reality, which cannot be explained on that basis. And, yes. our, and many scientists in the West are still dogmatically insisting that we dismiss these phenomena okay because they don't fit in with science okay. but for me it is this is a particular kind of uh, scientific practice and uh, can i just get back to the point about i just like uh, to quickly, the, 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 quickly the, no, hang on about the birds and the sun and all sure. that you see again this is a materialist prejudice i, I think God sustains the birds in the sky. Sure. I believe that God causes the sun to rise and set. I believe that God causes us causes everything in the universe. How does that reconcile with science? Because science, in my view, looks at the physical yes. uh, agree. cause and effects agree. within within Undoubtedly. that particular worldview. But it was never meant to be a metaphysical, philosophical Absolutely. explanation 100%. for everything. But this is so, where so there's you're putting of, me in a box with other... So you know, I'll, I'll just wrap up now. Sure. So I think it's still very plausible to believe, increasingly plausible to believe, that God acts in our world, not like an absentee landlord who just sets the world in motion. But he, as Christians call it, continua kratza. God continuously upholds and creates the, and sustains, sustains the universe, universe including the birds flying and the trees growing and our thinking and everything. So it's not like the god of the gaps, it's the god of everything. So I, I, yeah. Even the most mundane thing like a rock is evidence of God's existence. Why? Because it's a contingent ob uh, object that requires a necessary, necessary being. Well, you know about this. Yes, of not a cause. It's not, this is not Aristotle's first cause. Yeah. This is more like the Halam cosmological yes, argument. Right, right, Kalam right, right, in, in yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, uh, so, okay, you, you know answer. So, that is kind of, for me, this is a probably a philosophical disagreement, this ultimately, is, yes. not really a question about mechanics or mechanisms, no. so, I mean. So, this is my point. So, that's my point. So, there's a few things. The first being that when you say Western science and you say Western scientists, there's a very important distinction there. Because to say that I'm adhering to, because I adhere to science, I must adhere to the beliefs of Bacon or Hobbes or whatever, is not fair, right? I'm totally not making, I'm totally agnostic on the existence of God as a 
you know, as this god, of the, this this creator god, but does a non-interferential god. It doesn't interfere in the world. Yeah. Creates the god, creates the universe in the way that it will exist, and it continues to evolve throughout independently. However, to say that my not only am I not making an anti-metaphysical claim, I'm just saying that your metaphysical claim isn't sufficiently justified to make it as a true claim about the nature of the universe. Justified by in what terms? By what criteria? In, in any sense. What, there's, no, there's, there's a physically there's no, not claim? There's no causal justification. You mean, no you mean material You mean material cause? There has to be some... If, if something is material... No, seriously. If there's a material phenomenon, then it has to be explained through some material... Mechanism. Now, whether or not that mechanism is cause of a god, maybe there's a. Are you saying all ma all matter? Are you saying everything in the universe is material? No. Right. What about your no, thoughts? Are, 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 your, are, are your thoughts just material? I would say yes. Really? But, I'm, I'm I'm but, but no one's ever seen your thoughts. Absolutely. It's possible scientifically to see your thoughts. Absolutely. I believe so, there's so, some kind of emergent property, but it's hard to explain. I don't know because science hasn't got there yet. But why I can't they be? Why can't they be non-material properties? They possibly could be. No, but why can't they, they in they principle? Be, they, in principle, no, why can't no they be? There's no reason in principle why they could. Well, there we are then. But I can't say so that they the are problem? because I haven't haven't got a sufficient reason yeah, to justify. But how would you find out if they were? What methodology would you adopt? I don't, I couldn't say. But, no, but you already have said. No, but, 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 what's your name, by the way? What's your name? Leo. Le Leon. Uh, nice. Leo. Leo? Yes. Oh, okay. Leo, you've already given us your methodology. You said it's materialist. And I'm saying no. that you've admitted no. that there could be thoughts in your mind which could not may not be explainable by materialist criteria. So therefore, non-material phenomena in the universe might exist. Might. Yeah, but they might not be accessible by the materialist explanation. They might not be. Precisely. Not be. So all I'm saying is that there are such phenomena, there's abundant empirical evidence for them in all the but examples no, no, I've given. Therefore, you're, you're, materialism is inadequate to explain saying, them. You're saying that they can't be explained through materialism, but what is empiricism if not material? Oh, no, very, very different. The empirical method is the inductive method. It, it has no metaphysical what, properties. What way? Well, a deductive argument is, is, is like a tautological argument. All unmarried men are sure, bachelors, sure. which is profoundly uninteresting, sure. <laughs> obviously. Uh, but a, 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 an inductive one is you, you, is like a, a synthetic. You have to go out and look. Of course. Now, I'm saying empirically we can observe uh, deaf and blind people from birth who die, have amazing out-of-body experiences, observe accurately and fact-checked independently. They have these experiences. I'm saying that's an empirical observation that is now very well researched and in the published in the academic academic work. Therefore, can a materialist explain that phenomenon? I say no. They've all been tested. What about drugs? What about uh, the, the the brain having a, a last spasm of activity? All this has been looked at, and they found not to be credible explanations. So, therefore, inductively, I deduce that these things have legs, if you like, as non-material properties. That's my technical a, term. Bit of a contradiction to say you deduce something inductively, no? You induce. Yes. Okay. Yes. So my my <laughs> my other point is that to say that science is fundamentally anti-metaphysical is a total misunderstanding of the Western scientific method. Science. Western science. Whatever you. Well, whatever not all of it. Not all of it. But a lot but, of it. A lot of it. Not, Do it the dominant you, okay, paradigm. You dominant ask, paradigm. So the fact the existence of religious scientists goes entirely against this. You can have an understanding of the physical mechanisms of the universe and understand that it's entirely physical. Newton. You can. Newton, Newton was very religious. And you believe in God because you're yeah. not making any claims towards the metaphysical. You're not saying the metaphysical doesn't exist. Actually, you're not he, saying the non-physical doesn't exist. Actually, he, you're he, just saying yeah. that okay. we have these physical phenomena that can be explained in terms of pure mathematics and science. We can explain them through but, but Newton thought these were the actions of God. Newton is 300 years ago no, no, and he's no, operating no, 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 but he, 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 but my point no, is No, he's not. He's can, operating the modern course, paradigm. No, of course he's not. He's not operating in Einstein's relativistic paradigm, which no, no. is totally but fundamentally In terms of the scientific method, he... he but yeah. the point being that you can adhere to the scientific method without making anti-metaphysical claims. And just to say that because I am using science as a basis to determine my beliefs, I therefore am making a claim against the soul is not what I'm doing. And I think I've repeated myself quite a few times to say <laughs> that I'm not saying okay. the soul doesn't exist. I'm saying that it doesn't seem to me a sufficient explanation for these phenomena to just say the soul is the reason. Because that, just the existence of the soul doesn't really explain anything. In the same way that just the existence of God doesn't explain how the universe came to be. God has to have created the universe somehow, right? It, whether or not he thought it into existence, there has to be some way in which existence became a thing. You know, in, in which yeah. 
the universe became came into existence. Right? No, I, I, so I, I'm not made. Okay, well, we're, not, we're, we're going around in circles now, and I, I agree. I agree. We are, and I, I, I think. The empirical uh, evidence suggests very strongly the existence of a non-material entity. Call it spirit, soul, consciousness, self, whatever you want to call it. I'm not. I don't care what it's called. Uh, that that is not explicable on materialist uh, premises at all. But there's lots of empirical evidence for this. And this amazingly overlaps perfectly with the religious understanding that Jews and Christians and Muslims have about the soul. And I'm saying that this convergence between empirical observations and religious beliefs is one of the defining moments of our civilization. And now we need a paradigm shift away from a materialist understanding, which is dominant in the West. You may not agree, sure. I believe it is dominant in the West, from this to a post-materialist paradigm which can holistically incorporate in. yeah. all of these yeah. things and not attempt to re explain them away as, as as you have done. You talk about these kind of drug effects. Or, all of this is unconvincing. When you go through these possibilities, they have not been seen to be adequate explanations for this phenomena. So I'm calling for a new paradigm, one that is much more holistic, and I think it will happen. It is happening, actually, at the moment, particularly in the, U in the US, where you see these emerging scientific think tanks with very prominent physicists and chemists and others who are actively discussing these very issues. It's not some cranky but thing so at all. Your, so this is great. Your, this is great news. What's your causal interaction explanation, right? Because in, for order, for the, for in order for something to manifest in the physical, it has to have some kind of cause. In order for anything to manifest, it must have some kind of well, cause. Well, you're, 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 you're just saying uh, every effect. Just, let me just lay out my premise. Every effect is a cause. Yeah? Every effect has a cause. I agree. We agree. I agree. Physical causes produce physical effects. I'm not sure I agree. Okay. I, I, I don't want to be shot down by my Muslim brothers here, but for the sake of this argument, I'm going to defend the Asherah occasionalist argument. Any Athari is watching this, please turn away. <coughs> I'm, I'm just letting you know I'm going to defend a, a version of the occasionalist argument. You probably didn't answer so much. Okay. So I'm actually going to uh, maintain what I just said okay. and, and to deny please. what. Yeah. Okay. I've just given. I'd, I'd like to know. I've, the just, I've just briefed my brothers I'd, here about what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to know the justification, but aside okay. from that. Yep. Every effect is a cause. Yes, I agree with for, that. In order for something to manifest in the physical, it must have a cause, right? This yes. effect, yeah. this phenomenon of yeah. NDEs. But it may not be physical. It may not be or, physical. Okay, so it may not be physical. No. But if it's not physical, then through what mechanism do they interact? How can a non-physical produce an effect in the physical? In the same way, how does my having a thought, if it's non-physical, affect my body? How well, does yes. me wanting to lift my arm mean yeah. that my arm lifts? Exactly. exactly. Oh, the system wants to say something. But exactly, my point is that it's just the brain. My point is that you need the brain to justify you lifting your arm. You are material. So you deny I'm, you are, but you are. You're, 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 Without a doubt, I'm a materialist. Okay. Well, I'm, From I'm, what I'm, I understand so of the way the I'm, I'm an yeah. idealist. I, I think this whole physical causality. So yeah, it's an axiomatic problem, right? We're, we're operating on different axioms. Well, it's, it's a philosophical it's so difference. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I think even the uh, um, alleged physical causality between two objects is actually uh, not the right description because I believe God brings about every insta every event we see in the universe and it, it is God's habitual way of creating that we call laws like laws of physics the laws of physics don't actually do anything they are description of God's uh, regular action repeated action in the world but of course being God and it being sovereign he can do differently so in the case of Jesus for example uh, you know, it's impossible normally for virgins to have babies, but he did in his case, or Moses' case, to part the, the Red Sea and do miracles. Uh, because the laws of physics are not something over against God, they are actually our way of describing the habitual actions of God right. in the world. Now, this means that we can still treat the observable physical structures seriously, but ultimately, they are not the real explanation. The real explanation is the action of the action of God, actually. So, so if, if think, physics has its own kind of it's artificial reality here. Right. The real, real reality is God is so the actor is, in I the universe. This is my point: is that science and physical explanations for things do not make any 
any have no impetus towards the the metaphysical. They have no. I would say science itself needs a metaphysical explanation for its working. Say again. I mean, scientific method needs its own explanation, which so yes, which yes, is in the right. realm of may, uh, may may philosophy or metaphysical. Science itself has no claim on that, right? It's it's the job of philosophers to, or, or religious scholars, and that it's it's in that realm yeah. through which we can make that decision. So, in order to to make a claim on a rationalist basis, it has to be rationally justifiable. Whereas this is something that purely depends on the axioms that you hold to be true. If you don't believe in God as a cause, you can find perfectly many explanations for why things are the way they are. If you believe in God, you can find equal and opposite But you have not been able to do that. I've mentioned a whole range of phenomena that you've not given any uh, rational, materialist explanations for at all. But you for, for example, people with absolutely no brains left who have suddenly become very conscious at the moment no, of passing. That's, that's a misunderstanding. And, and you're saying, works oh well... The brain well, still exists. It's but just that it's It doesn't. Of course it does. The no, brain doesn't no, you just see, of become course, a tumour. No, no, I'm saying the brain is virtually disappeared. There is no physical basis for consciousness left in these brains, according to the the. I uh, need uh, to read the you will. You will. I, mean, I, I don't think you quite understand how serious this is. We're dealing here with people who have virtually nothing left of their grey matter, who suddenly at the end of life become very conscious and aware and interactive and fully human again. Yes, yes. This is an expression of their their, their soul, or their rock, their, their spirit, which has suddenly become their self, which is not identified with the material body at all. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it's separated from it. And materialists would say, no, no. It it's a product of the brain. That, I would argue, is a fundamental error which our emerging post-material science will actually recognize, actually. I think this is the future. Well, so this, this is, is the this future is the of we're science. We're postulating into the future, right? We'll we are. Never, we're not going to know until but, we know. But, but, and we might well, we know now, but, but, we might never know. We, but, but we it, the, the paradigm is catching up with this reality. Well, we'll see. Well, I, I'd we will, we will see. <laughs> I'd love to, uh, to, to see the, uh, the literature that yeah, you're of course. talking. Yeah, I'll yeah. shoot you an email just because there is, there's a lot here. This is No, I'd love to send you the University of Minnesota research by yeah, absolutely. by two academics and looked at this and they went through all the possible excavations of materials went off and they found none of them actually I'd hold love, water. I'd love to read actually, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very interesting. I mean, I think inevitably we are at an axiomatic difference. We we just take different things to be true at the fundament and so from there we derive different conclusions. And I don't think that's something we'll ever really have any light on, to be honest. I, I think, think no, I'm, I'm, yet, I'm, I'm, a, I'm hopeful one day you would change your paradigm. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> so what's your explanation for what of science in explaining the nature for science works yes in explaining the nature I mean, what does that the, mean the mechanisms I mean, what, through which nature yeah, operates yeah, yes so now science involves reason thank, thank you. you cheers science involves reason observation mm -hmm. and then imagination uh, yeah guess sure yeah so now working up science what does that mean yeah. i mean while well, science is working <laughs> science does that mean science works does because it's designed to work science works because no, no, it's falsifiable no, no, no. No, now now say that the nature is running randomly <laughs> without following any law then science wouldn't work yeah it wouldn't so be science but it does have laws, yeah so which is working why up science, yeah working up science means uh, the science uh, means that uh, this nature is rational what is this i can understand not so the, the, I, no, not rational. Yeah. Regular, regular, regular and rational. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I can see what you're going. You're going to involve rationally and design a right and design a right and intelligent mind. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they just finished. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah.